So today we will start to look at function oriented search. So function oriented search is essentially a problem solving tool based on identifying existing technologies worldwide using function criteria. So until you have made a function model of your product, how will you do function oriented search? Hmm? So since none of you have confirmed that you've made the function model of your system or the product, uh, we will not have a practice session today. We will, I will just give you the theory and we may close the class after that, okay? But uh, this uh, function oriented search has to, be, has to be done on functions that your system is performing. So whatever functions are, uh, you know, uh, need improvement are happening insufficiently or are happening excessively, and you want to correct them, that is where you would want to use function oriented search. Okay, let's look at how to do FOS. So first thing, the function oriented search uh, that in that in, in FOS, what we do is we generalize the function. We generalize the function using a two prong approach. We first we say generalize it by action, then we generalize it by object. For example, uh, hammer moves nail. Hmm? Hammer moves nail. Now, moves is only a, already a very uh, very generic function. We can search about where where there is any movement allowed. Okay, or hammer moves an object. So we simply say hammer moves x. So when you say hammer. When, when you generalize on action, so hammer acts on uh, nail, and then you say object, you say hammer moves X. Okay? And then you see where else is any movement of any other substance done. Okay? Now you change, remove the concept of nail. You do not say it is just small head of the nail at which you have to hit. You say, is there any other place where movement is done? So, so I have a question. So uh, when you when you say this, you mean is there any other place where hammer is moving something or anything is moving anything? It could be either. You have you have you could actually also remove the hammer part there. Or you only say the action is movement. Where else is there any movement that is happening? Okay. Hmm. Or uh, okay, this is the nail. What what are where are other places that nail is used and how is it moved there? Okay, so look at solutions across other places. You know, not just your industry, any other industry where some movement is happening. So it opens up a huge range of solutions that you could look at. Now you cannot go to every industry and look for solutions everywhere. You know, it will just waste a lot of your time. So the guidance is that you look for the leading industry. What do we mean by leading industry? Where performing the same function adequately and reliably is much more important than your industry. Or where the same function should be performed in a much more challenging condition. Hmm? For example, uh, mostly you will find that military applications or uh, space applications. Hmm? How would you do this in space? When it comes to products, you know, that is what it is. That is where it becomes, uh, it talks about leading industry. When you will talk about apps or anything like that, uh, suppose you are playing on costing, then which is the most cost sensitive market and how is that market breached upon by, by any, any other company? Huh? So you may, be, uh, you may be providing an app for say finance, but then you know that there are other apps, you know, where customers come and they, they do something about grocery purchase or something like that. How have those apps taken care of the cost sensitivity of our Indian customers? So how will you take care of it? So you look at the same function performed adequately or more uh, in, a, in a equally or more challenging condition. So now since you're talking about an investment financial app, you understand that your people, that your target audience may have some money. You can possibly charge them subscription. Grofers cannot charge me subscription. Hmm? But if you look at grofers and try 
try to emulate their model or if you look at some other company another app and try to emulate their their model if they are successful that kind of gives you a quick fix solution to your problem also and uh, be aware that fun function oriented search is definitely much more robust when you apply it to key problems rather than initial ones so what tool are we talking about over here key problems and initial problems what tool are we talking about where did we talk about key problems or and initial problems c c yes in the cause effect chain analysis so you notice function analysis cause effect chain analysis they are feeders into this solution finding method if you have not done those adequately well you will struggle with fos also but fos can give you very very quick very fast solutions for your problem statement as an example you wanted to reduce the weight of the drone while maintaining the strength can you think of an industry where strength is very important but you want to also keep it lightweight the military sector okay something which is closer aeroplane okay so we thought of such buildings hmm? you seen big buildings huge buildings they carry a lot of weight and they carry a lot of load on them but themselves the the pillars and the structure is such that they are light yet able to carry that that weight have the strength to bear huge loads and we mix these two ideas and there are these drones which have such ribs so that you can balance and you can have weight like that huh? uh, obviously you can look at aeroplane also you can bring in that dynamicity also all those things you can do but this is a function oriented search where you see okay around me is there a solution then you find one and you implement that hmm? so how it is usually done is first you identify the key problem that needs to be solved articulate the specific function to be performed list down the parameters okay i want the weight to be this much i want the strength to be this much this kind of pressure it should be able to bear so formulate the required parameters also so i am working between pressure and weight and all those things now you generalize the function identify other technologies that perform a similar function in both related and non related industry select the technology that is most suitable based on your requirements and constraint and then you identify you now do you think moving from this drone to this drone was as simple probably they did not even have these uh, these extra appendages in the first iteration they simply thought okay let me just reduce the weight over here and they came up with something then they must have realized oh now the weight is so less that even the wind would take it away so they said okay let us do something else so they might have made some, done some iterations to arrive at the final model there so you identify the technology you may not be able to directly use the technology as is in your system but you know this is a stable technology already in a leading system in a leading industry it's been performing well so you're confident about it and you solve the secondary problems required to adapt and implement it in your solution ha huh? let us look at another example uh any one of you over here is allergic to pollen or has asthma or something like that so whenever so this season is kind of the worst season for those of you who are sensitive to pollen anyone here yes sir hmm? so what happens what are the kind of solutions that you look at uh, at that point of time uh, drugs or nasal ointments uh, mask pehen loge and stuff like that the disadvantages are they are either expensive or they have side effects or they have they lead to difficulty in breathing and things like that you know or you know the mask kind of covers your face so they are so conspicuous you don't want to go out in uh, so okay nowadays due to covid everyone is wearing masks but uh, think of two years earlier or three years earlier 
you are the only person wearing a mask in a train so people will all turn around and look at you what's happening there is it not so they are very conspicuous so we wanted to find a solution how do we find a solution so what are the other leading areas where we need to remove dust or remove stuff from air for example in an industrial gas purification industry uh, you want to purify gases now if you cannot if if you do not remove all the particulates from that gas do you think a industrial gas purification factory would be able to sell anything no so their survival depends on removing that dust or removing other uh, particulate material from 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 the gas hmm? so it is their core activity without this activity this industry would not survive so you look at it and then you look at technologies where the same function is performed in in a evolved or more mature uh, method so you look at okay there are industrial dust collectors so uh, these chimneys and everything so they are these industrial methods and the action principle that they use is what is called as an industrial cyclone so they kind of create a cyclone by the shape of their chimney or by the shape of their moving uh, you know when they are running the gas through the system they create a kind of a cyclone so that the particulate matters are simply thrown to the wall the wall may have sticky material which would simply uh, collect those particles and you're done with your gas that finally moves out is clean so it is something like this the gas is uh, the gas enters from one side it moves into your uh into your channel the, the dust collector in the form of a cyclone hmm? and as it moves around the cyclone the orbit reduces and uh, the speed increases the particulate matters are not able to move at the same speed as other gases and soon the particulate matter hits the wall and falls down now the air that you send up send out is clean how can you apply the same principle for cleaning air in your nose now you want to create a a cyclone inside your nose hmm? so this is nasal cyclone that you want to create now so your function oriented search is to trap pollen from an inhaled layer that is the function you want to trap 95% of all particles which are greater than 5 microns it should offer low breathing resistance the cost has to be extremely low less than 2 dollars per dozen pair hmm? no side effects and it shouldn't be inconspicuous kisi ko pata no one should even notice that i'm i'm using these filters or using something like that the generalized function was to separate tiny particles from a gas flow we already looked at the technology of the cyclone the industrial cyclone there now how to move the, the what is the problem the problem is how to move the air in a spiral path without using fans so in an industrial collector they may have fans to run, to run the air in that path we don't have that how do we create a fan in our nose and then how to trap the dust particles for them they simply drop them but over here if if you drop dust particles it will come on your lips you don't want to do that so how to trap the dust particles also that is another secondary problem over here so to create the cyclone one thing that we already have is so when we talk about that industry the air was just there in some place and we have to move it so you needed fans over here we have our lungs which kind of pull the air in so there is a force that is already there can we use the same force to pull the air and so instead of fans which would push the air now we have our lungs which are pulling the air in hmm? so as we pull the air in the air moves into this particular filter that i want and the geometry of the filter creates a small cyclone in the nose itself okay and the dust particles are pushed to the edge to the edge of this by the centrifugal force because you are reducing the the 
the radius of the movement and the walls of the device are sticky. So the particles will simply stick here. And you notice we had kept the cost to be extremely low. So now you don't need to clean this uh, nasal filter up. You can just throw it away. They are disposable. You wear the next, it's something like masks. You, you dispose away the masks. Huh? So you just wear the next nasal filter when you go out next. And this in fact is a product. This product was, uh, so when I, when I came to know about it uh, in 2011, I actually saw the product in my hand. It was at that point of time available in the US markets. But as recently, I think as two years back, IIT Delhi, students also created a similar product using the, exactly the same mechanism. And uh, they had something going, they, they showed something in their prize event kind of stuff. Okay, they show they had demonstrated in their open house about I think two years back a very similar product. So these are nasal filters which would just plug into your nose and uh, they clean the air. You are taken care of. You don't need to take any medication. There are no side effects. These filters are disposable. They are cheap, and uh, they clean the air. Okay, so any questions about FOS till here? Sir, I have one general question regarding the product since it is so much intriguing. So, uh, what's the cost of this product and why is not all why it is not widely available if it exists? So, probably the students at Triple IIT, for example, they did not have an entrepreneurial bent of mind. They do not have an entrepreneurship minor as we have. They just created it and they did, they left it at that. I don't know. Okay, so in the U.S. market, is it available uh, widely? It is available. You can you can uh, you can find it. I think it's also available on Amazon or something like that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, again, this what did we do? We looked at a, a technology or a principle as it is used in the leading industry, and we adapted the same function to the problem at hand in the same form factor as we needed it. So, uh, you know, the key advantage of FOSs is, is that it adapts existing technologies which are already proven. They are easier to implement because that technology is already proven. They are more reliable, again, because they are proven. And because they exist, you, don't, you do not need to do a lot of R&D to establish them. So you save a lot of resources and therefore can reach the market in a much cheaper way than inventive new technologies and their applications. Therefore, FOS is the first tool that I'm introducing to you. Before doing anything else, just see, is there someone else solving the same problem? Let us see if we can adapt their solution. If we can, that's the cheapest, let's move ahead. If we can't, then we look at other methods or other solution finding methods. Hmm. 